So I want to talk about the hormone effects that can occur from doing a fast. Some really interesting research, I put the link down below, comparing fasting for two to seven days versus fasting from eight to 20 days. So this would definitely be a longer fast compared to a shorter fast. Now this data is not based on intermittent fasting, but at least you can get a concept of what could happen to the endocrine system when you start to fast. The first hormone that's involved is adrenaline, okay? This is a counter-regulatory hormone. So in other words, when you go to sleep at night and you're not eating, sometimes you're gonna get a release of glycogen. So your body's gonna use glycogen as fuel, especially if you haven't adapted to fat burning. What happens is the glucose is being released and the blood sugar is going up this way and then insulin comes in there and pushes it down. And so there's counter-regulatory hormones, adrenaline being one of them, that will kick in and release the sugar and raise the sugar back up to prevent a crash in blood sugars. That can happen, especially if you are insulin resistant. This is the main reason why people may feel that they're not sleeping that well when they're doing fasting. I realize that's a temporary situation. It's gonna get better after you've adapted a little bit better and you've lessened the insulin resistance issue. What you can do in the meantime is take a little calcium. Don't take calcium carbonate, take calcium citrate or calcium lactate right before bed and take some B1, okay? I like nutritional yeast for that and this should help chill this out a little bit so you can sleep through the night. But you can see in a shorter term fast, it'll go up more than a longer fast. Okay, next hormone is cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone, but it's also a counter-regulatory hormone to prevent the blood sugar from dropping too far. Same as what I just talked about right here. So cortisol release, because cortisol is a glucocorticoid. It releases sugar in the system to try to keep the sugar up. It goes up when you do a fast between two to seven days, but with time, after your liver adapts to ketosis, you're not gonna have this spike in cortisol. Okay, leptin. Here's the thing with leptin. It's a hormone that satisfies you. When leptin goes up, you're satisfied. You no longer have an appetite. Now, the problem is that overweight people, people that are obese, have high levels of leptin, but it's not working in their body because they have leptin resistance. And then leptin doesn't work anymore. So you, here you have this overweight person that is starving all the time because they may have high levels of leptin, but it's unavailable to them. When you start doing a fast, you start to reverse this process and you make the receptors for leptin work better. So leptin will come down to a normal range, but the point is that what caused the leptin resistance in the first place is a high level of leptin. So all we're doing with fasting is reversing that whole thing. You're reversing two things. You're reversing leptin resistance as well as insulin resistance right here. And this is the next hormone I wanna mention. When you do fasting, the biggest benefit from that is the reduction and normalization of insulin. So insulin will come down and insulin is tied into so many problems, not just weight, but inflammation, cognitive function, your mood, your kidney function, your vision, your heart. So you're gonna get massive benefits from fasting just by normalizing this one hormone. Then we get the serotonin. Serotonin will increase both in a two to six day fast as well as a eight to 20 day fast. And serotonin is gonna give you a lot of cognitive benefits. You're gonna sleep a little better at night. And the main thing that serotonin will give you is just a, a good state of well being. The next one is very important and that's growth hormone. Growth hormone really goes up, especially from a two to seven day fast. Growth hormone is the anti-aging hormone. Most people over the age of 50 are deficient in growth hormone. It also is protective against muscles, uh, collagen, joint problems. It protects against loose skin and wrinkly old skin. Very, very important. And it also influences your cognitive function too. Next one is glucagon. Now, what is that? This hormone is 
the opposing hormone to insulin. It's made in the pancreas, but it does the opposite of insulin. So it helps you burn fat. It helps protect your proteins. The way that you increase this is you decrease this right here. So it kind of works kind of like on a teeter-totter. But fasting is a very powerful trigger of glucagon. Exercise will trigger it as well. Exercise will also trigger growth hormone, especially if you do high intense interval training. Next one is T3. Now, I did a video specifically just on this recently, and I'll put the link down below, but sometimes T3 will decrease, okay? Now you might think, oh my gosh, that's gonna be a problem with my metabolism, but it's not. Because what you're gonna have is you're gonna have an increase in reverse T3, which is kind of like a T3 storage because your body's adapting to this new fuel and it's becoming more efficient. It's very unlikely you're gonna have any other bad symptoms from this, except you may have a slightly low T3. It might still be within a normal range, just on the low side. I wouldn't worry about that because as soon as you eat, this will come up. And then we have estrogen. Estrogen may decrease when you do fasting. Well, that's not a problem if you're estrogen dominant, but what if you're already low in estrogen? One of the best things to take would be to take some vitamin E, natural vitamin E in the whole complex to help balance um, your sex hormones. And this is one of them right here. And when you do fasting, it's very important to take supplements while you fast, just because you don't know if you're deficient in a mineral like potassium or some vitamin, and because you're not eating, you're not getting the nutrients. If you're deficient, that can create even more stress on the endocrine system. But if you do fasting with nutrients, it'll protect the endocrine system and you have minimal issues with hormones. But if you take a look at some key things that happen when you fast, you get massive improvement by decreasing insulin, increasing serotonin, increasing growth hormone, and glucagon, and some of these other hormones will come back to normal once you're fully adapted, but I'm just bringing up the different changes that can occur when you do a fast. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're back. With another amazing recipe. No grains, no sugar, totally keto. There's no suffering in keto. Absolutely not, Karen. And it's an immune system builder. Absolutely. You have to check this out. I think you should hurry up, watch the recipe, and make it yourself. It's just so easy to be keto. But is it simple? It's super simple. We hope you enjoy making it as much as we are enjoying eating it.